Good morning, folks. Boom. It really says something when an M3 solar flare gets us excited. In this solar decline to grand minimum, this is the best we got. Caused a minor and brief radio blackout. There was also evidence of instantaneous electrical connections with simultaneous flaring events. We've had two M flares thus far and a couple high C flares. More may be coming today. It's easy to tell that there isn't much ejecta, and besides, these spots are just on the limb cresting into view. Good thing, too, because as usual when it comes to major events, Soho is not updating. Are we seeing the patterns here? Every time. The sunspots keep cresting with confidence and shuddering in the face of Earth. We've got decay and magnetic separation even amidst that reverse polarity sunspot from yesterday's news. The spots on the limb here are making those M flares. Is that the best you got? We'll see. The cosmic ray fluctuations are reduced from two days ago, but the muon count is indeed elevated a bit now. Solar wind? Relatively calm. Slight fluctuations keeping the KP off the floor but can't produce instability either. Folks were supposed to be in a quake watch lull between the first watch that shook Iran and the second beginning in two days. And while the large magnitudes have taken a rest, significant seismicity has not. That Iceland volcano is still on watch and last night took a 4.8 earthquake right in the volcano region largest tremor of the current uptick. A five-pointer in Greece also isn't your everyday shake, and yesterday's Spain quake has a counterpart across the strait in Africa. Bigger quakes may pick back up soon as we're in between coronal holes. Next one's coming in on the north. Blue coronal fields separating the openings, and we've got positive heading in. During that time, Mars and Saturn will conjoin in the evening sky. Should be easy to see if skies are clear. Neptune, also going to be geocentrically opposing the Sun. Quick weather news. Japan having a bit of chaos as 9.5 inches of rain fell in 24 hours, causing landslides and major flooding. We've definitely got to monitor this Atlantic system, especially with the Uyen factors high on the flares. It's heading through the Caribbean, and while most models have this thing swinging north and away, one shows a gulf intrusion, the other shows a westward bend towards the east coast. In the Pacific, there is no similar worry of landfall, although Karina is heading for a collision with Lowell. Wind map shows a good deal of activity in the Americas. We've got a low in the Midwest that draws a significant convergence from a northern flow that also peels off west into Montana. The low on the east coast draws the convergence pretty much due west. Here's what we see with the storm zones. Flash flooding, severe alerts in those areas identified here. Very easy day down under with high pressure systems dominating the region. Best chance for rain and thunder is eastern Australia. Still got the main low up here in Europe. Still have the secondary flow to the east. Those areas have the thunderstorm warnings tonight, but also note the wind gust warnings for areas slightly west and south of the worst storms. Mobile Observatory Project is in Butte, Montana today. It's an early event this time. We've got the rest of the world's storm warnings and shots of our star to close. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, way too early local time. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.